How's it going guys? Andrew here with Justified EDC and I have a uh, unboxing here for you today that uh, will also be kind of transitioning into uh, a little bit of a project that I'm going to be working on here. So um, before we get into anything real quick, I just want to thank the sponsor of the channel, Auxiliary Manufacturing. Uh, Mike over at Auxiliary Manufacturing is making awesome custom USA made fixed blades like this pocket bowie here actually a new one that i just got recently here is this one's a little bit of an older model this one is the spike um, and then he also has stuff like here like the sumi so he's got a bunch of models available he's got a little bit of every, something for everyone so if you're at all interested in any of those knives uh, or any of his other work i do have a discount code with him code justified 10 will get you 10 percent off your order so if you're interested i will leave links down in the description to his instagram his website um, and that discount codes so thank you as always to mike for sponsoring the channel um, so let's get right into this here this is uh from knife center and uh, I, I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I'll uh, I'll just get right into this here so we can see what we're talking about here. Uh, knife we're using today to open this up is the Kershaw Blur. Uh, really been enjoying this knife. I put my own edge on it the other day, and it's just a really great uh, budget option. Made in the U.S. It is assisted, but, you know, uh, beggars can't be choosers when you're looking for uh, USA-made budget knives. So uh, let's get this open here. This is coming from Knife Center. Uh, you can get these pretty much uh, anywhere. A lot of the major dealers have them. Um, but this is, I don't know if you guys are going to recognize that brand here. This is from Real Steel. Um, so and I also have another package over here that we'll get into as well. Um, so normally I'm not really a big fan of the uh, Chinese budget knives or anything like that. Um, and I have a lot of different reasons for that. I, I have no problem with other people getting into them or anything like that. But usually I like to stick with... Uh, um, uh, USA made products when I can, and then imports, uh, I usually like to find, you know, European imports or, you know, uh, South American or whatever like that. But this is going to be a Chinese knife, but let's go ahead and open this up here and I'll explain my thoughts behind this. All right, there we go. So this is the real steel Barlow. So I'm actually looking at this for the first time in person as you are. That's interesting, yeah. So this has a, if you couldn't tell, it is a slip joint, and it actually has like the European style three-quarter lock or uh, stop, the three-quarter stop, as opposed to a half stop like a lot of American, American-styled uh, traditional knives. Um, but the reason I got this uh, is, one, just because it's a really, really cool design that we'll go over here in a little bit. But I've been wanting to try out carrying just a slip joint uh, for an extended period of time to do all of my uh, EDC kind of tasks. Um, so probably st starting today, since I got this, and I'll let you guys vote down in the comments. I might put a poll up on Instagram as well if you want to go check that out. How long you want to see me do this for? A month? two months, three months, six months, whatever. Um, I'm pretty much open to whatever. I was probably thinking, you know, between one and three months um, of just carrying a slip joint for my EDC tasks. Um, so obviously, you know, if I have to, you know, if I'm going to be camping at all in the next couple of months, which I definitely will be, if I have to build a fire, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use a fixed blade. Um, I might still carry a fixed blade for a defensive knife or you know something like along those lines but for anything that can be done with a slip joint any of my normal edc tasks um or you know just anything that isn't very specialized to a certain kind of knife this is going to be what i'm carrying and using and we're just going to see how that goes and the reason i wanted to do that is because i've been thinking about getting um some kind of uh custom slip joint made um, and i wanted to tr see try out how um, I liked having a uh, pocket clip on it. Um, one of the things that I find when I, when I carry traditional knives or slip joint knives, um, one of the main drawbacks of it is not the two-hand opening, but actually you know, having to get, dig down in your pocket and take it out of a slip or take it out of the bottom of your pocket and then bring it out to open it up and use it. Um, so I wanted to try out having the, uh, the pocket clip on here, and I think they did a really nice job with this one. And I also wanted to try out that three-quarter stop, because I've never had a knife with it on it before, and it makes a lot of sense. You know, you're, it's supposed to be for, you know, if you pr click this down to, you know, your half stop. Normally, at a half stop, that would have come down much farther and would have bitten my fingers, but at three-quarter, usually depending on where you have your hand on the knife, 
it's not going to bite you. So I thought that was an interesting concept. Um, and I saw this knife has the styling and everything I was looking for. So um, this is going to be a temporary solution for if I enjoy carrying a, uh, a slip joint all the time um, with a pocket clip and maybe with or without the three quarter stop, I might commission some kind of uh, custom to be made with similar specs to this, you know, a pocket clip, three quarter stop, slip joint, and um, I'll probably have some kind of higher end steel put on it, some cool covers, that kind of thing. So just going over this real quick, this is the real steel Barlow, G10 scales, I believe the blade on here is N690, if I remember correctly, N690, so you know, pretty basic stainless, but not too bad. Really like the clip point shape on here, Barlow style handles. This one does have a pocket clip, a wire pocket clip that is reversible from one side to another, so that's pretty neat uh, that you're able to um, uh, switch that pocket clip. Although I'm looking, I'm looking right there, and that looks like that notch wasn't completely machined correctly. Hey, let me look at this off camera real quick. Yeah, it looks like, um, you know, when the end mill that went down to make that final cut to open that slot up, because I know that slot inside was milled internally, but my guess is they, then they just took an end mill and ran it in here to make that opening clearance, and it looks like they didn't go just quite deep enough, so I might have to open that up myself. Um, but one of the cool things about this, you know, again, it's very, it's centered. The lock and talk is very, very nice. Nice snap. Uh, but these uh, scales are quick swappable and they have a bunch of different scale options. Um, they make some higher end ones. They have some carbon fiber, uh, some titanium, brass, copper. I think I heard somewhere that they were working on some antler ones, which I'm very interested in. But I like the look of the gray G10. I don't want to go crazy. I, I thought about getting, um, you know, the... Uh, um, the titanium handles, but I, I more like the look of titanium than I do the actual feel of it. So I saw these gray G10 and thought that would be a good substitute. So that's where you're looking at. So this is what I was talking about here. Those slots for the pocket clip are milled from the inside, but then um, they mill the recess opening here from the top. My guess is they just come right down in there. And it looks like they just didn't have their end mill low enough when they milled that part, it was probably uh, set up wrong or something like that. Um, but these look okay. So I wanted to show you real quick how easy it is to swap these, at least from the things that I've watched online, it's fairly easy to swap these. We're gonna be using this guy here. Uh, I had gotten this as a gift. I can't even remember, uh, Power Giant, I guess is the name of it. I'll leave an Amazon link to this. Uh, but this is a electric bit driver um, that I've really enjoyed since I got it has this tube on the side for the actual driver itself, and then it has these little magnetic panels that pull off, and you have a ton of options for bits. I might end up doing a full review on that at some point, uh, but right now, let me see, what size? Uh, unfortunately, those look like T6. What size is that? That's a seven, yeah, that's a seven, so let's go down to T6. Yeah, unfortunately they are using T6. I wish they would have done a T, uh, T8 or a T10 on those. Uh, but yeah, here you got you got uh, forward and reverse here controls. But then the spindle also locks when you're not uh, using it actively, so you can get some more torque on it. So usually what I do is I kind of break the hold on the screw there, and then I back it out. So let me grab a little bin here. So you're supposed to be able to just take that one screw out and then these scales slide off like that. So really neat design how they how that kind of works. And thankfully they gave me a cleaning cloth here so I can clean these up. It looks like they had some kind of grease inside probably to help the uh, people who are assembling these get them on a little bit easier. And then same thing here on the other side. Should be able to break that open back that screw out and then the clip should slide or actually you know what let me see if I can just take the scale off first yeah okay so that whole scale slides off with the clip 
and then you can see the clip just sits in that recess there inside. So this is nice, you know, completely ambidextrous knife. You can uh, slip, you can swap the clip to either side, and then obviously since it's a slip joint, you can open it with either hand. Kind of finicky getting that clip out of there. There we go. All right, so we got the black scale set aside. Let's see how easy this is to put back together. So I believe you're just supposed to be able to slide these back on. Um, and there is a pocket that you have to get lined up. Okay, so that's the correct side. And that's the correct side. Okay, cool. So that's what we want. So we want the clip on this side. So I should be able to sit the clip in there like that in those pockets. Or, you know, I'm dumb, I did it wrong. Obviously you don't want the clip on the outside or you don't want it on the inside. So clips in like that. And then theoretically we should be able to slide this scale. Am I doing this wrong? Oh wait, I have to slide it on like this. That's right. Oh, well, maybe you do have to do this from the outside. We are learning together, everyone. So uh, forgive my dumbassery if I'm doing this completely wrong. I thought I was gonna be able to slide that on with the clip already in there, but I don't think that's the case. All right, so maybe I have to, maybe I have to slide the scale on and then slide the clip down in. Let's try that. So scale on. Well, you know, let's first of all get this scale in place because we know this one's on the right, on the correct side. So let's get this in place so we're not dealing with two scales sliding around everywhere. All right, so that's in place. Slide this one on. Yeah, no, see, those that aren't going to fit down in there like that. So this has got to go on first. These have got to go down in there first. Maybe I just have to push a little bit harder. Yeah, there we go. All right, so you just have to, I think you just have to push a little bit getting that down in there. And it's still bent up a little bit. Hopefully all of this is on camera. I had to kind of pull it out here closer to me so I could see what I was doing. But hopefully now we should just be able to put that one single screw back in. And there we go. Yeah, there we go. And that shouldn't affect the action or the centering or anything because again you're not taking part any of the mechanical parts of the knife all these all the scales line up really nicely that's a pretty cool little system now that i know what i'm doing that's probably going to be much easier to do the next time if i end up upgrading these but feels really good in the hand uh the pocket clip is not too much of a hot spot or anything like that you know especially if you're using it at a pinch grip which is how i use slip joints most of the time you do have a little bit of jimping here, so you know if you accidentally want to go to close that, you're not going to close it on yourself. But if you do, you have that three quarter stop there. You can kind of yeah, you can kind of hold it like that and keep the blade from moving. So that's a nice little touch there with the jimping. But yeah, interesting little knife. So yeah, you guys, let me know uh, what you think. Uh, what you think of the project that I'm thinking about here. Uh, do you like that idea? Let me know how long you want to see me do it for. And then uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, custom makers for some slip joints that you think would be capable of doing something like this, please let me let, let me know down in the description. Again, I will leave links to the Barlow, uh, the scales, and this bit driver kit here down in the description. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I will see you in the next one.